Hello, welcome everyone to another International Relations Capsule for the Shankar IAS Academy. There is only one subject we can discuss today, that's the Russia-Ukraine war. The last time we discussed it, I assured you all that there would be no war. I was not the only one. Most people believed that there would be no war. And you know the logic of it. Because we know the reason for the war, we know the solution. So why fight a war? Why can't we go first from the problem to the solution itself? That was the logic that we applied. But logic doesn't apply in matters relating to conflict between countries. The only person who kept saying that there would be war was President Joe Biden. Even his own Secretary of State did not believe it. The U.S. diplomats never admitted that there would be a war. But Mr. Biden kept on saying tomorrow, day after tomorrow, etc. Et so, but nobody cared for it because Mr. Biden is not famous for his uh, political assessments. So whatever it is, it began, you know how it all began. Mr. Putin started talking about security for Russia. He felt uh, that the over um, sincere relationship between the European Union, NATO, and Ukraine was creating a problem for him. So he wanted an assurance from everyone that Ukraine will not be admitted into the NATO. And he had a strong ground for it because when Soviet Union split, there was an assurance given to the President Eltsin uh, that the NATO will not be expanded eastwards. In fact, logically, NATO should have been disbanded when the um, Warsaw Treaty was disbanded. But the NATO decided to stay on. It is no more an ideological grouping because it is not, there is no communism to fight with capitalism and everybody has adopted capitalism, so why have NATO? But they were concerned about ethnic conflicts in various regions. There could be threat from non-communist countries, terrorism, all these bearing in mind, they decided to continue uh, the uh, NATO alliance. And not only that, more people joined, about 14 countries joined NATO, some which broke away from Yugoslavia, and some which broke away from Soviet Union itself. So you have Poland, you have Hungary, you have uh, Czech Republic, um, various countries, even Slovenia, which is a former Yugoslav Republic. So both non-EU and uh, EU countries joined NATO, and Ukraine was supposed to have applied for EU membership and NATO membership. Though now we hear that they are only, they are not even applied. But anyway, was, was he, he started off with that. Mr. Putin started off with the complaint that he felt insecure because of the move of NATO towards the East to the former Soviet Socialist Republics. Well, the Western countries hummed and hawed. Uh, they had really no plans to take Ukraine into NATO, but they were not willing to give a guarantee that they will not. And at the same time, they felt that Putin will not fight a war. And so Mr. Biden, who believed that there would be a war, kept declaring that I will not fight. United States will not fight against Russia, but we will fight with economic sanctions. So this, I think, encouraged Mr. Putin, because his worry was that if he went into Ukraine, the European Union or United States might launch an attack on Russia. But he got a clear assurance that this will not happen. And therefore, he pressed the claim further and started, there was some tension and so on. And this went on, of course, the problem started in November 2021, when he started amassing troops on all sides of Ukraine. And this was a matter of concern. And Ukraine kept saying that the Soviet US troops should withdraw from their borders. 
But Putin said, I'm in my borders, I'm in my country, what are you worried about? So this argument went on. And finally, on the 22nd of uh, February, Mr. Putin made a, right, uh, made a wrong, long speech, well, I would say wrong speech, um, justifying an aggression, an attack. Just a one hour speech, I think we talked about it. He spelt out the whole history of Soviet Union and put the blame on Lenin, Stalin, Khrushchev, and everybody else for destroying the Soviet Union. And then he said, now Russia is weak, also threatened by the NATO and other, other forces, but he is determined to bring back the glory of the Soviet Union. He said it in so many words. And he said that I have the responsibility, I have now inherited the Soviet mantle, and therefore I shall make sure that uh, all these uh, countries which have joined Noted, NATO, etc., will come back and um, there will be peace. But there was no sign of all that, and the European Union did not take this threat very seriously. And that is when he made this speech and said, What I'm now doing is to enter into Ukraine, but only two provin provinces, Donetsk and Luhansk, you must be knowing the names by now that these provinces, I am sending my troops into that to peace keep in the, those regions. He did not say he's going to fight a war. So he said to keep peace in the region, I'm sending them in. And then he waited for two days. You know, Mo Moscow troops went into Ukraine. Still, the reaction was very gentle. Some small sanctions and you know, some banks not being allowed to. Uh, take uh, take uh, loans from the West and so on. So in those two days, he decided that these people are not going to hurt me, so I go for an overall attack, which he did on the 24th of February, last four days ago, this is the fifth day. And this has changed the whole situation. And uh, still, you, you, in the European Union and America kept saying that they will impose sanctions. And now they are imposing sanctions one after the other in the last few days, while the war is raging. And uh, everybody had expected that the war would uh, end quite suddenly, but it did not. Uh, because everybody thought that there would be a, an overrun by the Russian forces. And, um, you know, somehow, two or three days, uh, the Zelensky might run away, or he will be taken prisoner. And a new pro-Russian president will be appointed. And then Mr. Putin will declare victory and go back home. And then he will have control over the whole region. And uh, the new president will not apply for membership of, uh, of NATO. This was the solution that he had in mind. But not only did the sanctions increase day by day, making it difficult for Mr. Putin to continue uh, in various ways, like the price of the ruble, the value of the ruble went down by 40%. And uh, there is going to be a crunch. The economy of uh, Russia cannot persist for long with uh, all these sanctions. But uh, Putin did not show any concern about that, and he went on to bomb Ukraine, and he has reached very close to Kyiv. So once the Kyiv once Kyiv is taken, he goes into the presidential palace. He will of course depose Zelensky and appoint somebody. But the resistance has been so strong that he himself has been taken by surprise. The reason for that was Zelensky turned out to be a very charismatic leader. He was as an actor till 2018, and that to a comedian. And he did exactly what MGR, MG Ramachandran and Jayalalitha did. What did they do? They built themselves as perfect people in every movie they acted in. You know, MGR would always be nursing the people, looking after them, fighting for them, the man who runs the rickshaw. And all his 
films were designed in such a way to build his image. And so did Jayalalitha. And so when they came to politics, everybody believed that they will be like the movie heroes, you know, great friend of the people. And in the case of Zelensky, the show that he had was called The Servant of the People. And an ideal model president who is always concerned about his people, etc. And therefore, when the election came in 2018, he won with 73.2% majority against the, the reigning, the ruling president. And this excited a lot of people. And uh, he began doing what he promised to do in his movies. You know, he took away power from the rich millionaires. You know, imagine the Prime Minister of India gets rid of Ambani and Adani. Naturally, there will be a resistance because they, they hold big amounts of money with which you can do anything. They can buy the government of India if they want to. But then he controlled them and took the power in his own hands, so he became very powerful. He, uh, he said he will want to be a member of the European Union, then a member of NATO, and Putin felt that he had grown too big for his shoes. But in all these pronouncements, he was, in fact, getting more and more popular and powerful. And then when he came to the television and that started asking people to fight the war against the Russians, they listened. They said, take guns and go and shoot. And those who can't fight, leave the country, for God's sake, and go and take care of yourself. We will fight it out. And every day he appears on television, very cheerful, charming, 44-year-old president, very valiant and strong. And so what would have been a three-day war has now entered the fifth day and there is no sign of victory for the Russians. In between, you must have read about the UN Security Council meeting. Whenever such occasions arise, the Security Council meets and uh, tries to pass a resolution which reflects the thinking of the entire <coughs> United Nations community. And as luck would have it, as it happened in the case of China when the pandemic came, this month, Russia itself is the president of the Security Council. So the accused, the judge, everybody is Russia. But then within the Security Council, there were serious objections to what was happening in Russia and the United States particularly. And 11 member states out of 15 voted against Russia, asking Russia to withdraw and return to peace. Only three countries abstained. One was India, the other was China, and the other was UAE. Of course, many people misunderstand. They say that India and China voted together. There's a big difference between India's vote and China's vote because China is a permanent member of the Security Council. So, if in, according to the Charter, if one, all the five permanent members must cast a positive vote in order to get a resolution adopted. So, China did not, to, did not want to exercise a, exercise a veto because if he voted for the Russian resolution. It will be like vetoing the resolution that they did not want. So they, that's the only reason why they abstained. In our case, we have a dilemma. We are in a difficult spot because we have very good relations with Russia. Our military is dependent on Russia. We have just bought the 400 missiles, 26 military contracts. Uh, the Putin signed with uh, Modi, and so many things, every field, there is great cooperation between us. And then India is investing in Vladivostok region, where Chinese influence is big, but they want to balance China with uh, India. So there was no question of our opposing Russia. This is what happened also in 1979, when Afghanistan came. Everybody in the world was against it. Even people in India were against it. But Mr. Indira, Mrs. Indira Gandhi was not against it. She supported him. And that is a long story of Afghanistan we have talked about many times. 
Afghanistan was under the China, under the Russians for five years. We supported them consistently, and therefore we fell out with the Taliban. Then with the Americans, we were there for some time, and again Taliban has come back, and that whole story, you know. So here, we were we wanted to ensure that we do not take sides. So we have taken what is called a neutral uh, position in the Security Council by abstaining. Our abstention is simply abstaining. That is, we are not siding either of them. Our abstention will not make any difference. Even if we had voted, it would not have made any difference. So China vote was because they did not want to use a veto. So they um, uh, abstained. While we, were gen we genuinely wanted to be neutral. At the same time, we decided to criticize Russia for some of the things that they have done. So in the resolution, we abstained. But in the vote in explanation, the, the statement in explanation of vote contained several points, four or five point, points, which pointed at Russia as having done a few things which it should not have done. Like, for example, breaking up uh, the dialogue which was going on between France and Russia. Even the Indian foreign minister was in France, was part of this effort to rescue Ukraine. But he did not wait for that. Precipitously, he uh, launched a war. And all this was very clearly criticized in the explanation of war. And we finally said, yes, because of all the reasons, all these reasons, we are keeping out of the boat. So it was a balanced, principled, unlike the, unlike the Chinese one. And so we abstained. And the other countries abstained. So UAE, again, people are asking questions, how come UAE abstained? And you have people who know UAE, what happened in the last few months, you will know. This is all because of Israel. Because Israel has a stake in peace in Europe. But they are fighting wars every day and they know how terrible it is. So Israel is very much interested in keeping the peace by supporting Russia. And um, UAE itself has a, a major problem with uh, um, terrorists and uh, others. And so UAE has come together with India with a, what we call an Eastern Quad, that is United States, India, um, Israel, and UAE. So how can UAE vote one way or the other? So they abstain. So now the procedure in the United Nations is, as you may know, if a resolution is vetoed by a permanent member, that resolution is taken to the General Assembly under a resolution called Uniting for Peace in the sense that uh, the permanent members have the power, but the non-permanent members can also agitate. And then the identical resolution will be now placed tonight before the General Assembly. And I'm sure it will be adopted, to be carried, because there are enough people who are willing to vote for that, for that resolution. Because uh, anything that you can do to uh, criticize Americans or, and, uh, and that is fun for people at the United Nations. There's many times that U.S. has uh, lost its, uh, its vote. Sometimes U.S. puts up a General Assembly resolution and votes against it because others are all so opposed to it and then they abandon it. Such cases also happen. So even if you are very powerful in the U.N., the numbers matter in the General Assembly. But the Security Council, numbers do not matter. With one vote, the permanent members can hold their place without any attack from the others. In between, there was a, a resolution to call the General Assembly to look at the resolution. It was a procedural resolution, which we opposed. We, we uh, abstained on that also. There was no need. It is a procedural debate, so we could have said, okay, we are in favor of the debate, so we are supporting this resolution. But we did not. We wanted to be consistent, so we abstained on the first resolution and the second resolution. 
and of course in the general assembly also most likely we will vote against the resolution and support russia in a sense but fortunately for us all that we did in the security council to please the americans and the russians and the ukrainians with the same kind of force we became a kind of a candidate for mediation not that we want to but each one of them us said why don't you talk to the russians and solve the problems you have influence um uh, uh, russia said we are very happy that uh, you did not support this resolution so he spoke to prime minister modi and uh, help promised to help with the repatriation of uh, 16000 indians who are in deep trouble in ukraine and then uh, ukraine uh, said that they are very happy about uh, india's vote so please speak to mr putin and uh, bring peace into our region so we appear to be the only country in this whole imbroglio to be acceptable to all the three because we did not oppose any of them openly and we stuck to our position that what russia did was wrong and that was mentioned in the in the in the explanation of the vote resolution itself we abstained we had nothing to do with the resolution but we explained that this is the reasons why we did that and that is where the political action rests but on the military action something very surprising has happened that after 3 or 4 years for days sorry uh, russia has lost out more in terms of people arms aircraft etc than ukraine this was not expected and this is because of the charisma of the president and he told the ukrainians get ready to fight otherwise leave you go and survive there somewhere else we are going to fight and uh, if we win we win if we don't we don't but we are going to fight and that is the call he gives to the people every day he is using the social media very effectively so he is declaring this to them and the people rise they they pick up guns and go to shoot the russians and as a result the ambassador the ukraine ambassador in delhi said that they have killed uh, 5400 or 4500 russians and down several aircraft several helicopters etc etc and that is the reason why even though the russian soldiers have surrounded kiev presidential palace they have not entered it because they are afraid that they must be massacred by the people inside the palace so surprisingly enough russia asked for talks not ukraine russia invited the president for talks or his representative and uh, he readily agreed the disagreement was only where it should be russians wanted it in below russia which is anti ukraine in all respects but uh, zelensky said no we will not go there we are willing to go to poland so last two days this discussion was taking place and he listen he also asked that the zelensky said that there should be a uh, cease fire before we talk number one and secondly there should be peace while the talks going on no fight but now we have landed up in a situation where there is a fight which is raging and at the same time the two parties are sitting near chernobyl you know chernobyl was the notorious place where there was a nuclear accident took place uh, my own feeling that the, is that the talks will not uh, you know gain anything because russia is not going to surrender anything nor is mr selensky uh, so uh, this is the the situation and we will know as it goes on but the indication is that war will continue only two reasons why the war would end if russia wins and zelensky is a you know deposed and the puppet government is established in uh, ukraine uh, or secondly the uh, the sanctions will be so debilitating for russia that they are not able to breathe they will not to exist economically in which case they will say okay let's have some peace and then we will negotiate and then take the you know take the sanctions away 
these are the only two possibilities but we are confronting a very grave situation which could break into a global war if a request made by zelensky to become a member of the european union immediately today such a request has been made so if that is made then the european union will be getting involved americans will and uh, there will be a full scale war otherwise um, putin will win the war but it will be a pyrrhic war it will not be a war of success it will be a war of success or failure if you can say if there is something like that and maybe russia will face years five years six years 10 years of guerrilla warfare and uh, ukraine may become the vietnam of russia that also is a possibility and the last point is about the 16000 indians stranded mostly students and a large number from kerala so we hear about it all the time in trivandrum and they all stranded they are on the point of uh, starvation so depending where they are some places they have to travel or walk 10 kilometers 15 kilometers 30 kilometers to reach the border and even when they reach the border they are not being allowed to enter poland or czechoslovakia or any other czech republic or any other country and uh, in fact since so many ukrainians are trying to get out the ukrainian soldiers are attacking these students and asking them to return and not cross the border because poland's border they are only allowing a few people to cross and so they are chasing the indians away and we have seen scenes of that on television so but this has become a big challenge to the government of india because the government of india is being accused of delaying the repatriation because many other countries had left but we had faith in putin we had also faith in what we used to say that there will be no war so we did not take the precaution of moving them out and even the students were not very keen to move out because they would have problems about continuing their education because most of them are in um, medical education and if we came away now even if they are able to go back they will lose a semester or two so they were also not very anxious to leave but when the overall <clears throat> action took place on 24th uh february then things changed dramatically now they are all screaming and shouting at the government of india for letting them stay there and starving them but no but nothing has happened nobody has been hurt or starved out or anything like that but the situation is very serious and that is why government of india after taking many other actions has now dispatched four cabinet ministers Uh, to each of these countries uh, to make sure that they open their borders for the indians to come back i'm sure you must be following the news four or five planes have already returned but many more will be required because 16000 people is a lot of people and this is one risk we are running around the world because indians are everywhere we are very proud of that we say it is the empire on which the sun never sets but that may be true but when there is trouble it's always the indians who get caught and uh, we we did not even know that there were so many students in ukraine because nobody tells the government everyone goes for its own his own reasons and so government is in a shock as to how to get these people and therefore a high level delegation has been sent many officers were sent earlier so life as officers who know russian were sent to all these regions but still the students complain that they are not able to contact anybody nobody is contacting them and even if they are contacted they will say walk to the border we will pick you up from there but how to walk to the border with in this intensity of war so maybe there is a ceasefire and if there is a lull naturally our people can be rescued but even otherwise they will be because otherwise it will become a big blow for the modi government he cannot afford uh, to have indian national skilled abroad which will not uh, help him in up it will not help him in back so he has taken this initiative to send first officers and now ministers to deal with the situation 
So let's all have our hope that uh, this will work and these people will come back. And in the meantime, there could be a ceasefire. There would be also a UN Security Council resolution condemning the attack and asking Putin to leave. All this will happen within the next 24 hours. But what happens after that is a big question mark. For that, we have to wait for the next capsule uh, on the consequences of the, um, of the attack on Ukraine by Russia. It does not seem that it is not going to be an easy walkover for Russia. Uh, but at the same time, they will finally prevail. And if they prevail, Russia has to be subdued in its opposition to its neighbors. Thank you. Well, time for questions. Yes, those are true. Such things Ukraine has done. But that is not the only thing that... Uh, Ukraine is the only country which has done that. Several people have been unhappy with India on various grounds. These are minor grounds. I don't think it is a factor. This is, this is a WhatsApp literature. You know, WhatsApp shows so much of these things. These words we may not even notice. These are insignificant words. If you go and vote against India in a particular committee or something, it doesn't make even news. Uh, but that is not the factor. The factor is clearly that we have deep commitments in Russia and deep commitments in the United States. And so we have to be neutral, naturally neutral, not just in voting. Because naturally neutral may not work, but as I said, all these three have been very happy with the results. And uh, they are all, all the three of them are saying, why don't you intervene and do something? And Pres Prime Minister Modi called President Putin and spoke to him for the need for ending the conflict. So we are taking the line that we have told Mr. President directly, and then why should we go and vote against him? And such arguments, but it's a realistic, pragmatic decision, which was decided by Mrs. Gandhi in 1979. Mr. Modi is not the author of this position that was authored by Mrs. Gandhi to support the uh, people of Afghanistan against uh, Soviet forces. So it's consistent. The opposition is saying that there's a wrong decision. And uh, it is clear to them that this was not Mr. Modi's decision. This was the decision of Mrs. Gandhi in 1979. After we pointed it out to them, you know, purely academically, then they realized that. And now they don't seem to say it. Of course, they also say, why didn't you bring back the Indians earlier? Well, well we should bring back Indians only if it is required. And just for the fun of it, we don't uh, bring back our citizens. That is the reply to that. Because you know the answer. Because it's impossible to get a medical seat in India. Either you have to pass an examination or you have to have tons and tons of money you can give to a private uh, college. So people who don't have either of these, they go anywhere for medicine. They go to China. When I was in Moscow, a lot of people used to come to Moscow. Nobody wanted Russian uh, certificate. But they said, no, let us take a certificate, we will see. And then uh, pressure. Lots of graduates from Moscow, you know, Moscow University or Lumumbai University. What do you do with them? So we recognize them. And uh, they all, not only we, United States and other countries, they are very really rich doctors now. So, and that is the investment that people are, uh, are making. Yes, Russia wants to overtake uh, Ukraine, like Iraq did with Kuwait. In the case of Iraq, Kuwait, there was an international force against Iraq. But Russia will not have that good fortune. There may be many people opposing Russia, but there may not be many people wanting to take any, any action on it. And uh, therefore, they cl clearly expect a total domination of Ukraine to be used for the future to fight against America and the European Union. Zero. The world will end. <laughs> There's no question about it. If there is a nuclear war, 
uh, US cannot sit idle and uh, there will be a nuclear war with all its uh, consequences. But there are two versions of it. Uh, first, the report was that Putin had uh, asked his nuclear forces to be ready. But later in the day, he clarified to be ready for what? Not to attack. To be ready to prevent an attack or to prevent blackmail and also to attack if somebody attacks us. So there, there is a logic there. But uh, now, Belarusia has come up with an idea that they want to become and declare themselves a nuclear weapon state, which would be illegal because they are now an independent country, not part of Russia. They had the nuclear weapons because they were part of a, um, a permanent member, but now they are not part of a permanent member. Therefore, they have no right to keep nuclear weapons. And IAEA will get after them, there will be sanctions, etc. But to add to the confusion, he also said, we are going to declare ourselves nuclear weapon state, which is another, another threat, but empty threat. Of course, it was premeditated. Well, did he have trust in the US and the EU? In fact, he was feeling threatened by them. So he did not trust the US and the, and the EU. So there is no question of uh, that being the reason. But Putin had planned it, but announced it slowly. First he said security, then he said uh, these two provinces, then he said he is going for a picnic. All this he did, and finally he said, I'm declaring war on Ukraine. So his credibility is completely lost, and nobody is interested in his honesty. They would have a few days earlier. But now that Russia and China have signed an agreement of uh, loyalty, friendship, neutrality, etc., etc., and now there is an understanding that on Ukraine, China will help Russia, and in Taiwan, Russia will help China. So if this happens, there will be again a big war because the Americans will not uh, permit that. So they will not remain neutral if there is an attack on Taiwan or if there is an attack on... Because the US was more than neutral in India's case because President Trump was supporting us fully. But that situation doesn't obtain now. And therefore, in both the cases of Taiwan and uh, Ladakh, Russia will side, Russia will side with China and uh, China will side with Russia. And that is the biggest problem that we have, as I mentioned last time, that uh, there is likely to be this axis between Russia, China, Iran and Pakistan. And you know that Pakistan was in Russia at the time of the, when the war was launched. Either of them, more likely Russian-backed president. So they can maintain him as an independent government and then secretly do all the tricks that they were playing. They approached me in 2014 when I was the vice chairman of the Higher Education Council in Kerala. Suddenly some 40 Indian students landed in my room and they said they are coming from Ukraine. I said, from where? <laughs> so they said, we are all studying. That's the first time I heard that Indians are studying medicine in Ukraine. And we have heard about China, but uh, apparently Ukraine is still cheap and um, easier to get admission. There are many agents in India who take these people. And I must say now those agents are were helping the students. Many of them are praising them for the effective action they have taken. But there is no possibility at all of getting them medical seats. You can, you can all imagine 40 medical seats is impossible. Then how will you give them 1,600 medical seats in India? Even if all the seats put together, we will not. So there will be a lot of despair. Hopefully, many people will be go back, will be able to go back and uh, pursue their studies. Well, they already supported. 
morally and that will be a deterrent nobody will attack russia because they know like it happened in the bangladesh crisis nobody attacked india because soviet union was behind us so similarly they will be protected by soviet union we will but that won't make any difference to the situation neither side is depending on our military support the question remains it depends on how far putin wants to push this situation he knows very well playing with nuclear weapons is extremely dangerous so even if nuclear weapons are not used by the time he comes out of this war putin will be very weak and may possible that there will be a coup there also and somebody else will take over from from him well they have the option but they are not likely to exercise it for the sake of the play yes china is it can block south china sea any time and the global trade will go for a six but they are not taken them yet if ukraine had joined it would have been a different story but this decision not to fight a war is taken by the united states and the, and the um, nato is simply following that because they don't want a world war it will destroy the global economy itself well china has become a greater friend because uh, after this decision earlier maybe china would have of course here also they only abstained but china would have definitely abstained even before but now they have no choice as a permanent member they have to abstain in order to exercise a vote unless he goes out of the conference room that is not permitted in security council you have to stay there only if all the 15 members are present can the meeting start so you cannot just walk out and say something and do something that's not possible in the security council yes in a sense we can say that they could have been worse but uh, but they also are looking both and both sides not if mr president uh, biden continues and uh, mr trump is waiting in the wings but of course at the moment he is only criticizing putin he is not criticizing anybody else he wants to be president again that's all on his agenda and he is already campaigning for it so that is uh, another thing and that is a threat to biden biden is all the time looking backwards to see what is trump doing and is doing a lot of damage and therefore biden's stock has gone down and now if he goes to war it will be much worse and therefore you know united states is not likely to get involved well north korea will always fight for those who want to fight a nuclear nuclear war and um, uh, north korea is criticized by the americans and others a, a lot so they stand with russia and china china is north korea's pet and now that russia is also a friend they could be together well that is a risk that we are going to do we are going to face you know in a real world war where will we stand let's see let's hope that it will not happen because there are so many options and so many possibilities and i don't want to even think about it and remember all this for your examination you know all these uh, technical names and uh, names of people and the tactics and the and the sequence of the war everything should be in your notebook or something or the other will come because examiners are always reading newspapers and so whatever is in the newspapers they will ask you so be sure that if you know what is in the newspapers that will be very good thank you very much see you next week